Hi. I was never expecting that I would ever promote agro agrochemical companies. Uh, well, but I have learned they are very much necessary, but not in the way that we have them today. So this is about regenerative agrochemical companies, Regen Agrochem. And there is a massive window of opportunity after the giant corporations leave Europe. They have made an absolutely terrible job and uh, so w let's wave them goodbye. But unless we build something uh, better, uh, this will be really a harsh awakening. Uh, and very, very few people see this, so uh, I make this video and also ask you to send this to people who are working in agrochemical context and are also seeing their companies leaving for uh, the Far East now. And uh, myself, I'm a professor at Hamburg University of Technology. Uh, director of the Institute of Wastewater Management and Water Protection, and we have we have massive problems with agrochemicals, as you know. Um, and uh, I will also talk about regenerative agriculture, and uh, this is something what is uh, well also on uh, this YouTube channel, so you can also uh, find uh, materials there. Uh, more than 100 years ago, there was uh, Professor William Albrecht, uh, whom I uh, really adore for, for what he has done. He was so far sighted, so far ahead of his time, and uh, he had major influence, but business interests were really uh, bundled to uh, make his voice unheard and his uh, students uh, pushed out of the system. And uh, so uh, we have a famous quote from him that is really very much uh, showing the whole disaster of uh, the conventional way of agrochemical agriculture. And as I said, I want to combine biological and chemical and physical. All right, so the quote. Uh, I must say before, uh, NPK is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Uh, and the bad stuff in there is the nitrogen. So there are many soils that need phosphate or potassium. And so I want to read this uh, quote. Um, as I said, it's, it was done in uh, 1940. NPK formulas, as legislated and enforced by state departments of agriculture, mean malnutrition, attack by insects, bacteria and fungi, wheat takeover, crop loss in dry weather, and general loss of mental acuity in the population, leading to degenerative metabolic disease and early death. And that's something what we really uh, see today. And this is absolutely uh, catastrophic and uh, can't be tolerated any longer. Just imagine a general loss of mental acuity in the population. Uh, however, uh, there are crazy people that are uh, seeing this as a business opportunity and uh, rather exploit this, well, these findings, these, these scientific findings of a great soil scientist and they saw a lot of uh, business opportunities in this, also from the side of the pharmaceutical industries. And unfortunately, uh, they do earn so much money that the influence on uh, policies and uh, also on legislation is uh, massive. They have influenced the way universities teach. So they teach old style, old fashioned, 
agrochemical agriculture almost everywhere funded by taxpayers money and so this is a system where fair play is not applied so far so i demand fair play from now i demand fair play i demand fair play and this is something where i found that instead of saying all agrochemicals are bad or the companies must be destroyed i'm rather calling for making them very beneficial for society for a change there's a lot that has to made, be compensated for the damage done and uh, that could be also very much healing for many people involved in this voluntary or uh, just uh, being ignorant of what they really do um, my institute, uh, Institute of Wastewater Management and Water Protection, Hamburg University of Technology in the north of Germany. Um, I have uh, worked a lot on resource-oriented sanitation because I have seen that uh, a lot of the nutrients from the soil that we get from nutrients are uh, either destroyed in wastewater systems, put on landfills or be flushed out to the seas. And many of those uh, components are uh, ending, so they will not last uh, all that long. Um, so um, besides resource-oriented sanitation, um, I have found that uh, restoration of soils is the crucial issue. Soil life is the crucial prerequisite for a good future for all humans and uh, so this is my priority and uh, for this we need regenerative agriculture and regenerative agriculture can be uh, built also by regenerative uh, agrochemical companies that can be small local companies and in fact i would prefer those so what we do uh, we have developed um, the so far best system of rice cultivation um, dry rice system with intercropping we call this i rice intercropping rice with uh, legumes uh, with beans uh, was very successful um, this system can save 15 to 20 percent of the total water consumption of the global population and that is just incredible and uh, the ignorance uh, the, the wide ignorance of this, these research results and the efforts of millions of uh, small farmers with dry cultivation uh, and uh, saving water um, is, is just showing that uh, we as people, we need to uh, bring the change. It will not come from government, so they are so much tied in with existing systems um, but that's why i make these videos so that um, those interested can spread the word or also become consultants in this field there are so many uh, great business opportunities uh, where life is fun uh, you can create a good income and uh, bring progress for uh, the people you work with um, yeah, this is some results um, and the iRise system was uh, really uh, better in um, uh, well, yield and uh, also in uh, having the uh, well, uh, less work for weeding because the beans are pushing so fast that they are covering the soil between the dry rice plants that are spaced more widely. And with that, uh, there is uh, loss, le less labor. And so that's a great system. Only 30% of the weeding efforts need to be done. And it's a system that runs without NPK fertilizer, but the soils can need a lot of micronutrients like molybdenum so that the um, nitrogen fixation from the air will actually work. So another business opportunity for regenerative agrochemical companies. 
Uh, we have developed a weeding robot to get away from the uh, herbicides because herbicides are catastrophic in the environment. Uh, they are in the groundwater. They are in almost everybody, uh, everybody around the world. Uh, what is a scandal in its own, and uh, this needs to end. So uh, the weeding can be done uh, in a mechanical way by weeding robots. Nice project of our institute. And uh, our core business is water, wastewater, soil interactions, and we have developed a lot of systems where the nutrients from the well, food that end up in wastewater can be recovered. And uh, the nutrients are mainly in excreta, and most of the nutrients uh, like uh, NPK, are in um, uh, in the uh, urine alone, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and many, many others, including a lot of trace elements. And uh, so that leads to systems where toilets are, um, well, part of uh, fertilizer production, so part of what can also be feeding regenerative agricultural companies. And um, the projects that I have developed 25 years back are now going to scale. This is a project from uh, Sweden, um, Helsing, uh, Helsingborg. And this settlement for a few thousand people has a separate black water system and uh, recovers the nutrients. And I was pretty proud that uh, uh, this system uh, was developed by myself. And uh, so that's an issue that is now getting traction. Things are incredibly slow. That's, uh, well, something I have learned. So we should, should have the patience, but it will not work if not many young people will take these issues up. Otherwise, it will not be a good future for all. We can do it, and a lot is going in a great direction. I'm very optimistic, uh, but we need more people. It's uh, really too few people who are really uh, going for what they are believing in and where they well, develop uh, great skills and become uh, well, world class in that field. All right, so what we do is restoration engineering. Uh, if we restore the soils around the world that have been destroyed by the old paradigm of agrochemicals, um, m mainly by uh, over-fertilizing with mineral nitrogen and, of course, the biocides that are detrimental to soil health, this leads to the scenario on the left-hand side here, and uh, that will be a desert planet. But everything is there to make uh, this planet uh, even more abundant um, for nature and humans. And these are the two pathways. Um, the um, upper scenario is uh, the, the one, um, well, 60 harvests left until everything is destroyed. What would be uh, like if agrochemical uh, production continues and uh, on the other hand we can have regenerative agriculture and uh, agroforestry, forest gardens, uh, natural farming and all these, these great methods and uh, for having really really efficient systems we need to consider a lot of uh, chemicals like trace elements and there are also soils where phosphate is simply missing. Uh, Hello, I want to introduce my new book, Garden Communities, that I've written together with Andrew Toth uh, and it's about uh, creating a good life in uh, rural areas. The book is, uh, well, on living diversely producing locally and together with nature and neighbors. Uh, diversely means to have a lifestyle with uh, maybe two, three different occupations 
some out on the land and some at the desk or healing work, teaching work, whatever. And uh, also having all these opportunities in uh, rural areas. And uh, if you're interested in this book, I would be happy uh, if you can uh, also recommend it to others or order for the upcoming next birthdays for people that might be interested. Rural life is gaining a lot of attention lately, as you know. And uh, here is the, uh, well, backside of the book as well. And uh, the, that's also where you can order it in Europe in print and in um, US and Canada in uh, uh, well, the e-book uh, well, uh, places, uh, the usual marketplace for, for e-book. All right. Thank you. Yeah, micronutrient deficiencies in soils around the world are really prevalent. And um, like zinc is missing in almost uh, half of the soils around the world. And this is something what is uh, absolutely incredible because zinc is so important for having a healthy immune system. And uh, also boron is often missing and the molybdenum. Uh, as I said, if we don't have molybdenum in the soil, uh, there is uh, no fixation of nitrogen by legumes. Uh, yeah, uh, the lifespan for a lot of these substances uh, is very, very limited. That's surprising. This research is absolutely stunning and uh, frankly alarming. And this is really a call for action into regenerative methods in uh, sanitation, in agriculture, and also in industry, because we cannot waste these elements that are crucial for the production of uh, food. Um, if they are sort of wasted for uh, industrial products that are not recyclable, uh, this will not be ending well. And as you can see in this uh, research, uh, like availability of boron, like around 50 years, same for copper, molybdenum, and um, manganese, that is also important. And uh, this is only a few of those 80 plus elements that we need to consider. So there is something uh, that needs to be done and we need regenerative uh, agrochemistry for that. Uh, healthy plants and healthy humans might become very rare within only 21 years because then zinc is starting to uh, run out and uh, that can really lead to uh, these uh, scenarios where um, the food is so uh, depleted that um, well, people are falling in more easily. All right, uh, so um, next one. Uh, we have a lot of elements that are very important for health of people also. And I want to uh, highlight one element, and this one is uh, lithium. And the lithium is uh, a trace element um, that is, um, well, uh, often lacking in the food. And that was the case in Texas. And there is a 12-year study that was done in uh, Texas, uh, USA. And um, they looked at the levels of um, lithium in the drinking water in the, sp uh, in the study regions. And they searched for regions with enough lithium in the drinking water and uh, in regions with, without lithium in um, the uh, drinking water. And, um, the findings were absolutely stunning and a sane society would consider this an alarm bell. And so as we see that there is a widespread irresponsibility um, in people that should do this from administration policies and so on, and also in uh, corporations, um, 
there is a two to three times higher percentage of violence, depression, suicide, rape, and more. And uh, so this is something that needs to be considered. Uh, this is one of the studies, but there are 30 more that clearly show um, this uh, interdependency. All right, so uh, probably there are 80 plus essential trace elements. The classification of essential and non-essential today is bogus. Uh, it simply doesn't work and it's not consistent at all. And it seems that all of the 80 plus uh, elements are essential as trace elements, even aluminum. I was stunned when I found that or heard that. Um, and uh, the thing is that we have too much uh, or too little very, very close together for many elements. So we need to make sure to supply enough for healthy plants, healthy soil life, healthy people, healthy animals, uh, but not too much to um, have it um, in a toxic range. And the best way to do this is with uh, leaf sprays. Um, all right. Also, gold is an important trace element. So um, that is uh, Interesting. So I, I have not met a single farmer today who is fertilizing his land with gold. <laughs> yeah, a few words to regenerative agriculture because regenerative um, agrochemistry will be part of it, a necessary part. And that is um, the, the regenerative farming was made popular and also largely developed by Gabe Brown, a farmer with uh, 2,000 hectares of land. And this amazing book, uh, Dirt to Soil, uh, is a family saga uh, that is absolutely amazing to read. And I can only recommend this very highly. Gabe has, only, has also some uh, YouTube videos and interviews up. And he was actually inspired by Ray Archuleta, uh, who was at the time working for the U.S. Department of Agriculture for one of the uh, consultancy branches. And um, he realized after like 20 years what he said was misinformation about NPK usage. And he uh, sort of uh, laid the foundations for regenerative agriculture. And he inspired also Gabe Brown and many other farmers and Gabe is so popular today so that we can really thank him. So shout out to Gabe if you might see this. Uh, so if anybody has contact to him, I really appreciate his work and uh, I'm forever grateful for what he has done. All right, then um, we can have well, most people are uh, saying there are five, uh, five uh, elements or five uh, parts of regenerative agriculture. I have expanded this because now there is the amazing work of Dr. Uh, David Johnson from New Mexico State University, who has uh, found amazing things about improvement of soil biology, specifically with having a wide range of soil fungi, uh, so to have soil activators. So that's point one for me, improvement of soil biology. Um, then point two, and there we are with the regenerative uh, agrochemistry, supplement missing macro and micronutrients in the soil. And micro elements uh, should be applied by leaf sprays, and also optionally by biodynamic preparations um, and um, in activated soils in the long run um, the soil fungi like mycorrhiza they will supply all the trace elements for from all soils as uh, dr elaine ingham has found out and um, this is something what only starts working 
if we have a um, well great um, regenerative uh, agrochemistry that is doing absolutely world-class consultancy so less turnover with masses of chemicals that cost enormous amounts of night of, of energy like in the case of nitrogen and uh, well destroy soil life and pollute the groundwater and efficiency very very low nitrogen 80 percent is wasted mostly into the groundwater and that's why i promote regenerative methods as a water scientist so point two is really a uh, look at the chemical part so one biology two is uh, uh, the chemistry and we need to work on the uh, physics and uh, there will be an upcoming interview on this channel on the physical uh, level that is also very important so point three that is the classic uh, regenerative um, uh, well, element uh, minimal disturbing of the soil do not plow uh, or dig um, and uh, then immediately phase out nitrate or ammonium fertilization while reducing biocides and this will protect the soil life but you must inoculate your soil with the um, soil fungi in order to be um, really working so that's point one and two are needed to get this going point four permanent soil cover and deep rooting plants even in winter if you're in a region with winter seasons species rich green manure deep rooting flat rooting broadleaf uh, shallow um, and 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 everything and uh, direct seeding where possible and uh, high productivity will also feed the soil best so the farmers that are producing most will also build most humus so that's a good person then keep livestock in proportion to arable land, rotational grazing, mop grazing, um, as it was uh, well made very popular by Alan Savory, but uh, Alan was uh, inspired by André Voisin, a Frenchman who made this popular also in Cuba, where he became a national hero for this method because it, it worked so well um then uh, include agroforestry and also uh, well, forest gardens and bioenergy should be mainly wood gas because uh, making biogas from food is a subsidized foolishness uh, famous in germany so we are the fools of the world in in promoting things that are absolutely uh, well contradicting uh, rational thinking and uh, systems with zero efficiency and major environmental damage uh, are promoted uh, by legislation and uh, this is absolute craziness and it becomes crazier with every month i i, I suppose uh, so that's why we must come up with solutions that the farmers will apply and um, also other entrepreneurs that are well building up all this it's a major shift major shift so we need uh, basically millions of people um, to join in and that's good news many opportunities for having work where you can be proud and not where you must be ashamed at the end of the day um, yeah then um, one final remark for this these seven approaches work together implement them all, all wherever possible all right then uh, plowed soil uh, no plow direct seeding soil um, and you can really well see this uh, with well you you find the difference between the two soils with your fingers so neighboring soil plowed uh, would be completely different and this is a very good 
uh, no-till organic soil of uh, um, the Hegler farm in southern Germany. And um, the findings of Dr. David Johnson were showing clearly that there is no connection between uh, mineral nitrogen, like in nitrate, and productivity. So the red bars are productivity and the green line is um, the uh, well, nitrate levels and nitrate zero best yields. And this is not a co coincidence because uh, the uh, well, nitrogen uh, in mineral form is destructive to uh, soil life. Also for phosphorus potassium, there is not a clear, clear um, connection, but the connection lies in the ratio of fungi to bacteria. And shout out to uh, my colleague, Dr. David Johnson, who is also professor at universities. And uh, your research is world-class and uh, can really uh, revive uh, agriculture in a fantastic way. Um, and also thank you for uh, well, letting me use your slides. Um, yeah, this is the way they make uh, the uh, well, soil starter Johnson Sioux no-turn combusting bioreactor. And uh, that's what he found. So four weeks composting, 22 weeks, that's where the compost is normally used. If you let it sit for a year with, without turning, but with enough oxygen, you will find a very, very high um, well, number of species, specifically the, um, the fungi that are destroyed by the endless turning of compost that is often done. Yeah, and then John Kempf is another one of my heroes and uh, his organization Advancing Eco Agriculture. Uh, great webinars, great YouTube channel, check them out. And he was clearly showing from his experience from childhood on, his father was a distributor of agrochemicals, by the way, and he learned about the downsides, uh, but he also knew that um, some agrochemicals or some chemicals are crucial for plant health and that's the plant health pyramid and just to have complete photosynthesis you need the magnesium iron uh, manganese and you need yes you need nitrogen but not the mineral nitrogen uh, that you supply from outside but soil life can supply that uh, if step two molybdenum is present and for that second step, you also need uh, sulfur and boron. And then the biology kicks in. And that's why chemistry and biology must both be considered. And uh, a lot of the, well, lack of success or the limited success of organic agriculture, that is still impressive, but uh, they could do much better if they apply the findings of regenerative agriculture and supply more uh, micro uh, nutrients and also look more into the balance of the uh, macronutrients. So nitrogen. So that's the big, um, well, uh, damaging factor and the nitrogen uh, um, well, utilization is completely, uh, uh, well, through the roofs. Uh, the, the production uh, through Haber Bosch, very, very energy uh, intensive for Germany, where we have the biggest, uh, well, still running out, but we still have the biggest fertilizer factory in Europe, uh, BASF. And they were using around 30% uh, of the natural gas imports that were um, well inhibited by political motivation and um, starting to, to destroy industry in 
uh, Germany and uh, many other European countries. And uh, as they use so much nitrogen for uh, uh, um, energy for the nitrogen production, they leave to the Far East and the problem will remain. But uh, we are very much known for being inventive in Germany. And so this is a call out also to my uh, fellow uh, German speaking people in the German speaking world, mainly Germany, Austria, Switzerland, uh, but also internationally, uh, I want to encourage everybody to uh, look into regenerative uh, uh, agrochemistry as a good business opportunity also for small enterprise. Efficiency, as I said before, today is only around 17% and that's uh, what ends up in, um, in the groundwater. Um, at the same time, surprise, surprise, uh, nitrogen in the fertilizer, NPK, so NPK fertilizer, the, the N that we want to eliminate is very, very expensive. And uh, so let's kick that out. So we will reduce expenses um, and at the same time we will protect soil life and the groundwater. We need to um, supply molybdenum, uh, molybdenum uh, but as you see, the cost for these trace elements are tiny. Even if you combine all those that you may need, many soils have a lot of those, but if you don't supply those that are lacking, the whole system cannot really work properly. And that's one of the problems in organic agriculture, that they are often not allowed to apply uh, substances um, in uh, chemical substances. Um, yeah, uh, so then the elements must be looked at in the whole range. Uh, so we need to look at 80 plus elements on the table of elements and uh, their interactions, synergistic and uh, antagonisms are uh, crucial. And uh, Dr. Stefan Hügel is one of the main researchers um, internationally who is working in this field on a practical, applicable level with his Institute of Mineralien Kreislauf Forschung, that means Institute of um, the uh, mineral uh, loop uh, and uh, his website is indicated here and uh, so he has started a lot already and those who are entrepreneurial can also reach out to him and uh, well maybe learn from him and uh, well join in in the development that is needed he cannot do all this with his uh, small uh, um, verein. It's not even a company. Um, yeah, the well machine that he bought is an X-ray fluorescence spectro uh, spectrometer, and this is a handheld device, very expensive, and you need a radiation um, well schooling for this machine. And with that, he can look at the whole range of uh, elements. And this is crucial for doing good consultancy. So, as I said, instead of producing bulk chemicals and selling them at global market prices where the profit margins are very low, uh, regenerative uh, agrochemical companies, uh, they could really uh, make very good consultancy and supply those elements that are needed specifically for this plot or at least for this, the local conditions in this area with the crops, with the typical soils and so on. And this is also a shout out to people working in agrochemical industries and there are many, so, so uh, it's a huge branch in uh, uh, Germany and uh, Switzerland and also France. And uh, so this is something where I 
a call for action and we need those people that have the expertise and that may not be all that happy that uh, their uh, companies are uh, moving so far away. So branch off, make your own companies, but give good service to your clients instead of helping them to destroy their clients and their farms. And I mean this, this is not kidding. Um, well, a simple example with just adding some chromium in avocado culture. And um, with very, very little uh, chromium that is considered non-essential, by the way, uh, there were major improvements in productivity. So the, the far left plant, um, you would think that's the normal development. But if you look at uh, the plants on the middle and more right hand side, uh, a little bit of chromium costs near nothing. Uh, it's, we are talking uh, parts of a teaspoon per hectare. And of course, needs to be applied by leaf spray. If you spray this into the soil, uh, it's mostly lost in other reactions. And uh, so if you apply this to um, the leaf in a proper development stage, uh, the plant can absorb this and ultimately also, um, well, bringing it up in the whole uh, ecosystem there. And uh, then organic agriculture is uh, well working a lot with composts and often even with municipal compost, what I would never do because there is so much pollution in there, so much microplastic and um, so also that doesn't work out well in our society. And um, now Stefan Hügel uh, has analyzed a, a good um, well compost with the Kinsey analysis. So many farms do either Kinsey soil analysis with this list of elements and uh, also with, uh, with Albrecht uh, analysis from the a famous uh, Professor Albrecht that I quoted at the beginning. Remember, loss of mental acuity in the population. Hmm. And here is one of the reasons that even in the compost for the organic farms, a lot of stuff is missing. And this would be considered great organic farming. Molybdenum, molybdenum zero. Hello. How do you want to synthesize nitrogen from the air, from the soil microbes, if they cannot make nitrogenases, where there is a molybdenum in the middle? Uh, this is uh, absolutely incredible. We, we are sort of considering ourselves scientific society, and we are everything but. We are misled by uh, like uh, corporate interests that are not even making any sense uh, if you look at, uh, well, what they offer. Uh, but still people go for that and they are uh, still buying this shit and uh, the, well, subsidies from governments uh, through universities and almost 100% of research on agriculture is for agrochemical agriculture. So that's misallocation of public funds. And uh, these companies earn a lot of money so they could make their uh, well, marketing uh, just by themselves. Uh, fair play. Once again, I demand fair play. I demand fair play. I demand fair play. So, uh, as you see, also some other uh, elements are uh, very low and we cannot go on like this. So this is absolutely uh, crazy. The good news is that in good healthy soils, we do have a lot of these elements. And uh, also there is, um, well, there, there is this, um, possibility to eat from the oceans. So um, 
here I have a um, glass of uh, glass wort, pun intended. Uh, it's also called salt wort, and this is just well got it from the from the ocean nearby, um, and uh, this is edible stuff that grows in pure seawater. Um, also called salicornia, and an interesting branch is also the seawater greenhouse. You will find a little bit uh, in the internet. And other and this stuff uh, contains uh, well all elements because it is growing in seawater, and seawater has them all, including even gold and palladium and so on, what is very often lacking in uh, the food that you can grow in uh, food shops and also organic shops. And another thing that I really love to eat um, is uh, the sea lettuce. So this is a, a product by the scientists, uh, scientist um, uh, Dr. Uh, Heidi Wichmann. And uh, this is where we can make use of the uh, well, elements that the um, sea lettuce uh, is providing. And she has done years of research in this field and she has clearly shown how beneficial this is, especially for mental health. So loss of mental acuity, uh, there is a cure. Better soil, better food, and eat sea lettuce and other uh, great uh, macroalgae. And I surely do. And I also cultivate this uh, salt wort in, uh, in, in soil and adding a little bit of uh, uh, sea salt, actually. Um, so that's one of the ways to get to the trace elements. And the other way is to eat from trees. So one of my favorite things is to plant uh, food trees. And I've planted a lot of walnut trees and uh, uh, more recently a lot of um, sweet chestnut trees uh, in my forest garden and also have a plot of agroforestry. And even though it takes very, very long uh, to become productive, uh, it needs to be done now. The, the, the generation of uh, my father and um, before was very much inhibited by uh, the post-war <clears throat> situation. And now we have uh, the freedom thanks to the internet, to really get kicking and uh, to really build a good future for all. And uh, so the trees are taking the uh, elements from deep down in the soil and there are lots of uh, uh, micronutrients there, especially if you supply uh, the right, um, um, well, mycorrhizal fungi what for hazel by the way it's uh, it's truffle or for um, uh, the the, the um, oak oak can be eaten as well also truffle and for the sweet chestnut it's uh, steinpilz i don't know the english name uh, <laughs> stone mushroom i don't know the very high quality mushroom that you find in forests uh, with lots of oaks um, all right, so now the tasks of uh, regenerative agro for, uh, agrochemical companies uh, are listed here. And this is just a suggestion how to start. Uh, so instead of uh, producing uh, huge amounts of chemicals uh, with uh, limited, uh, well, income uh, generated, for all the effort, uh, it would be more in uh, clever components where consultancy plays a major role. So this list is uh, just uh, like for inspiration. Uh, first, 
so, uh, Regen Agrochem supplies all the necessary chemicals out of 80 plus for specific plots of land after in-depth chemical analysis. Quality over quantity. Next point. Synthetic agrochemical compounds developed and distributed are fully mineralizable, break down to CO2 and water in typical environmental conditions. And these do really exist and uh, that should be the rule rather than the exception as today. Um, third bullet point, quality control of the crops based on the full range of the table of elements. And uh, this gives feedback for the farmer, for the consultant and for research. Uh, the analysis of uh, leaf sap, um, chemical analysis or also bricks, vitamin C uh, to be high and nitrate being very low would be quality parameters. Giving real consultancy on regenerative agriculture in total that is important, not just for the um, chemical part, but also for the biological part and uh, uh, no-till methods uh, and all that, because it's a it's an overall system. And Regen Agrochem uh, acknowledges to be just part of the whole um, well uh, operation. And um, the real consultancy means that uh, the farmer gets good advice and is not just talked into buying the latest stuff that is uh, just pushed on the market and turns out to be toxic and detrimental to soil health and as in so many other products. Um, next point. Uh, to offer professional education and training on regenerative agriculture once again in total and Regen Agrochem can become a driving force to uh, well, spread uh, regenerative agriculture and so there is a lot to be done and a lot of demand and this is also a part of the whole business model. Um, in my point of view, uh, we should have, as the last bullet point, uh, preferably owner-operated local companies or franchises uh, for reputation economy. So, thanks for listening and for spreading the word on regenerative agrochemical corporations. Massive windows of opportunity after giant corporations leave Europe. And if you are interested more in regenerative agriculture, look at my uh, Nexus Engineering uh, um, video on this channel, uh, video channel of Ralf Otterpol uh, in YouTube. And uh, this is called Nexus 2. And you are most welcome to um, well get in touch and also uh, give feedback on this also down below. So we want good discussion with people who have good knowledge. So, okay, thanks very much. Signing out.